JetBlue Airways, long considered by many to be one of the best U.S. airlines. Famous for invading markets, dropping fares, and changing the game, such as with her new mint suites. And recently, launching flights to London, competing directly with British Airways. Today, they take yet another step forward, starting flights to our northern neighbor. And I will be on that inaugural flight from here in New York City to Vancouver, Canada. Let's head to JFK. JFK's okay, Terminal 5, home of JetBlue. Also home to the TWA Hotel, which I have not been to yet, but definitely someday. All right, where do I check in? Right down there would be the answer. JetBlue is by far the primary airline here in Terminal 5, so there are plenty of check-in counters, kiosks, and bag drop areas down below for passengers to use. Since I'll be flying international today, I need to scan my passport, to complete the check-in process even though I did already get a mobile pass on my phone. Okay, that's that. I'm not checking in any bags so I can head right to this ridiculously long security line and I still don't have pre-check after all this time. But wait! Okay, somehow they put me in some express line and I didn't have to wait that long. So it's currently 3.17, flight's at 5.10. I got some time to get some food. These New York airports get more and more crowded. Every time though. I mean, I wouldn't expect anything else, but. Gate 15 is our gate here at JFK. Supposedly, there should be some decorations and it looks like I see some Canadian flags. Okay, there's slightly more than just some Canadian flags. Oh, hello! I'm not really sure what I expected JetBlue to do for this inaugural flight to Canada at the gate, but since Vancouver has a very sizable Asian population living there, we got treated to some local Asian Canadian egg rolls, sushi, and fried rice, along with a inaugural welcome cookie, a small water bottle for anyone, along with fudge brownies and chips. By far the most food I've ever had at an inaugural event. Why buy food when free food is provided for you? And it's all Asian too. Egg rolls, sushi. <laughs> Once our bellies were all filled up, it was time for some inaugural announcements. We're actually flying to British Columbia. Yeah, so it is, uh, I'm sorry, Vancouver, uh, it's our first Canadian destination. Uh, we hope that uh, through this new route, we get to disrupt that Canadian uh, uh, service, right? Low, low fares, uh, great service that we have on board our airplanes, and uh, we're definitely thinking we're going to be able to do that. You guys had me sold at the unlimited snacks. Uh, I, I, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. And I can't believe that it took you so long to get to Canada and to get to Vancouver. But I hope it's the first of many destinations. I hope that my idiot brother will finally get his ass to New York because he lives in Vancouver. Um, it's incredible to think in 22 years we've grown from a small carrier to now serving these 111 destinations across the United States, Latin America, the Caribbean, the United Kingdom, and now Canada. On behalf of myself and the 23,000 JetBlue crew members, appreciate you being here today. Thank you so much for flying JetBlue and uh, cheers. Thank you. <laughs> That's my call to go board. 
So the plane's only an A320 today, not an A321. Uh, it doesn't even have the mid suites. It's just even more space. So nothing really special about the plane. This is the whole day today is just about the first flight to Canada. So it should be a interesting flight. There will be some games on board and maybe some other stuff too. Time to go to Vancouver. How are you? Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank, Thank you. Somehow I had elite status. Hey, I'll take it. Elite status boarding, elite status and security. Hello. Hi, how are you? How are you? Good, how are you? Welcome. <laughs> As I said, today's transcontinental ride will be aboard one of JetBlue's A320s equipped with their new interior. There are 42 even more space seats up front, followed by 120 economy core seats as JetBlue calls them, which is where I shall be sitting on the journey to Vancouver, 16F specifically. The cabin, while obviously retrofitted, definitely does still feel older though, with small overhead bins. However, mood lighting has been added with the retrofit, which we'll get to see later on. Every seat on board is equipped with a personal touchscreen monitor up top and USB port with a credit card tap feature on the side. Moving down is the tray table until we reach the seat back pocket, or shall I say pockets. There are two side pockets for smaller items, a middle pouch for your phone, and the main larger pocket with the safety card actually located not in it, rather in its own compartment. A very excellent design. Down below is two more USB ports and two universal power outlets per three seats. Lastly, one of the most famous things about JetBlue is their generous legroom. And sure enough, this is really good for six foot me. There's one per seat, but I'm taking both. Also, Vancouver postcards. Five hours and 52 minutes outbound today. Unfortunately, we haven't cleared yet because somebody forgot to uh, put the Arrive Canada, put the airplane onto uh, so they know we're coming. I'm just kidding. Uh, we're good to go. Five hours, 52 minutes. It's going to be off and on bumpy. Just keep an eye on that seatbelt sign. You got the back of the head. You got Alik. You got Travis and Lisa up front. With me is uh, Brent, and uh, I'm Mick, your captain. So, uh, a lot of time later. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. A little colder in here, 55 degrees. The wind's out of the east at 9 and it's raining, but you're used to that, right? Hey, right, sit back, relax your flight, folks. Well, time to get this nearly six hour flight to Canada's west coast off and running. as large as they used to be on JetBlue, but still larger than some and having a recline feature. Well, turns out flight attendants were just starting their first of five services on the flight, so might as well open this tray table up, which is nicely sized, extendable, and having a single cup groove, and show you guys what JetBlue offers on board. The first service was not a free service, as they came with the buy on board products, which includes some of these snack boxes and other JetBlue items for sale. The free stuff would come in the next four services, that including snacks and drinks, although alcohol does cost extra, unless you're Mosaic. Immediately after the first service, the crew started the first drink service and snack service, 
first cart that came by was for drinks, in which I ordered a hot tea with cream and sugar. second cart was of course the unlimited snacks, something JetBlue is also very famous for, to which I got four different items. This cinnamon maple granola bar, this pack of Cheez-Its, some brown sugar cookies, and this bag of kettle corn chips my seatmate was nice enough to grab for me. Another very nice feature of JetBlue has long been their personal TVs, which have amazing responsiveness and flight maps, which looks like we're just north of Sudbury, Ontario at the moment. We'll show off more of this awesome IFE though later on. Uh, but we do a little thing in these inaugural flights called In Flight Bingo. For those of you that will be in Vancouver, uh, we have some tickets to the Capilano Suspension Bridge, the first winner. Oh, we have our In Flight here tickets. Okay, and it's 14D. 14D, raise your hand. So someone, there we go. Okay, you won one of them. Next one. Okay, 22C. 22C, is someone there? Okay, next one. Okay, right up front, 1A. 1A, there we go. Okay, the winner of this. Tickets on JetBlue. 17B. Is someone in 17B? Okay, you won a pair of tickets. Congratulations. I didn't win again. Eh, whatever. The crew then wanted to do a really cool cabin shot for JetBlue's Instagram page, and then it was time to relax. As we neared Manitoba, flight attendants came through the cabin with a fourth service on this flight, handing out cups of water to anyone who wanted it. And naturally, when drinking a lot, human beings then head to this place. It's nice. The lavatories on board this A320 definitely aren't as nice as their A321s and new A220s, which really blend in the New York vibe quite well, but since this is a nearly 14 year old plane, I think it doesn't look half bad. While it is a bit tight, there's some cool blue lighting around the lav. And speaking of cool lighting, that brings me to the mood lighting installed on this plane with the retrofit. Honestly, I think Delta's A320 updated cabins probably take the cake for me, but JetBlue I think also did a fine job. It certainly looks a whole lot better than the small IFE screens and worn leather seats they had, although I will say, those were some extremely comfy seats that had even more legroom than these modern ones. But as far as this current product compared to legacy airlines in the US, it is just so much better. Now, even though Alaska doesn't have PTVs, and obviously walking through the cabin, people do use them, <clears throat> American. But anyways, I still think Alaska and JetBlue by far have the best economy classes in the USA, without question. So, that brings me to the promised look at this very personalized in-flight entertainment system. And when I say personalized, I mean every word. Well, the one word. Every home screen should have your name on it along with all their entertainment offerings and it's quite extensive. There are tons of movies available from so many genres, even JetBlue giving you the option to look at ones suitable for your flight duration. There's also a bunch of TV shows and series along with games to play while in flight. On top of those things, JetBlue offers a whole slew of live TV channels provided by DirecTV. This is something carried over from their E190s and older A320s, which I have to admit is really nice because most carriers just have news. So one of the best parts about JetBlue is they have free Wi-Fi. The only US airline to have free Wi-Fi, which really helps on a flight this long, a six hour flight, because you don't have to pay for it. 
To connect to their Wi-Fi, simply go to Settings, click on Fly-Fi, and follow the prompts. When everything is all set up, another really cool feature is the ability to connect your phone to the IFE screen, which means you can control the screen with your phone if so desired. I mean, look, that's a really cool feature, but personally, the touchscreen on the PTV is really good enough for me and honestly more helpful anyways. But I do really appreciate that free Wi-Fi as I used it throughout the flight. With about an hour and 50 minutes left, it was time for service number 5, a second drink selection service, to which I also got some more hot tea. In the US, it's very common for airlines to use coffee brands on their planes like Starbucks, McDonald's, Community, or like on JetBlue, Dunkin' Donuts. Let me know what you guys think of this, but FAs did not come around with snacks again. I did still have some from earlier, so it didn't bother me at all. And I'm pretty sure if you do want some more snacks, anyone can just get up, go to the back, and there's a basket of free snacks available at all times during the flight. So apparently at the Vancouver airport, you need to wear a face mask, actually all throughout Canada, I guess on planes. Totally different from the US now how it's been for about two months. So flight attendants are now coming by with face masks. No further comment on that touchy subject. Unfortunately, the last portion of this flight, which is supposed to be the most scenic crossing the Rockies, was not visible due to clouds, so just spent the last bit of time talking with my very nice seatmate. By this point in the ride, it started to feel very, very long for an A320, so I think everyone was looking forward to touching down in Vancouver. So, let's do just that. We appreciate your business and we hope to see future JetBlue flights. Thanks, Flight JetBlue. I must say, it did feel a bit weird landing in Canada on a JetBlue flight, but here they are, expanding once again. Like most inaugural flights, the airline definitely tries to impress its passengers and the media on board and at the gate, no exception here, but the fact it was on JetBlue, whose hard and soft product are already very good, made the long flight experience from gate to gate quite enjoyable. I can't help but feel though that this route should 100% be used by one of their A321s. I think this route is definitely going to be successful and there needs to be mint on it. But for a first flight, or I guess to get the Canadian mojo going at JetBlue, the A320 is fine for now. Really enjoyed this whole experience today. All the crew were great, plenty of celebrations on the plane and at the terminals. And yeah, I think even the general passengers which made up the majority of the load, actually, were excited to be on this first flight. And I was excited to finally be back in Canada after over two years. Oh, thank you guys. Thanks. Thank you. And that's it. JetBlue is officially in Canada. And I officially I have to put this back on. What'd you think, guys? It was good. How long? But six hours, six and a half hours. It is so damn quiet in the customs area. I think I'm gonna end this video off here. 
Got to figure out all this COVID and custom stuff and head to my hotel for the night. But that was that. That was the first ever JetBlue flight to Canada. A very long flight, but they're finally here and I think it's a good thing. So thank you guys for watching. This Canadian trip will continue. These videos will probably not be uploaded for a while, but um, yeah, international travel is finally coming back. And that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Welcome to Canada. Oh, 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 oh,